What do you think on this topic? I'll share with us. So there are a lot of questions on when you want to buy. So I was thinking, okay, because we have this more analysis framework mm. to guide us in terms of, you know, what are some of the qualities of project and a particular unit to look at. It's just something very interesting. Last time when I was young, oh, I'll be exposing my age, right? So that, that time there was only green and red line. From my house, if I walk very quickly, it takes me 15 minutes to Chong Baro MRT station. And to me, that was considered great, you know, because it's like 15 minutes can walk MRT. It's like, wow, like to me, it's like fantastic. And nowadays, like, oh, yeah. five minutes a bit far. This thing like, called the sweat factor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sweat factor. Don't sweat, that means it's walking distance. Sweat, so sweat factor. factor. <laughs> Change the MRT effect to sweat factor. <laughs> Yeah, we're really super hungry, guys. Okay, can we have two more nuggets? <laughs> Who is richer? I'm hungry. <laughs> hey, can, can we bring the food or can we have the special segment now? <laughs> One, two, three, lower! <laughs> <laughs> is that what? Is no, that anniversary or what? No, it's not. They just want to control our food supply. So Angeline? Is Angeline here? Happy birthday, yeah. oh, yeah, birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, birthday to you. Oh yeah, Why are you still here during your birthday? Yesterday, why another time hey, your birthday? I specifically I texted her, her not to come today. I said birthday Hello? no way to why work. You come? But she really want to come because she, so that we can celebrate for her. Is it? Oh, where's the cake? Hey, Taka, cake. You got order. You got order cake. Buy cake. <laughs> How old are you? Ah, time off. Time off. Hi, you're thirty one. Yeah, why? Oh, Okay, yeah. let me share a little bit about Angeline. SQ, five years, so 31 years old, single and available. So, so uh, let's continue back to where we left off. So now you're on pick. Hey, we, we should have a box or two jiang, right? Oh, <laughs> right. I want to talk about pricing later. Oh my God, we should play um, the charades. Yeah. Play charades, then you add out the effect. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, you can choose, choose the effect. Okay. A volume uh, has been taken. Uh, I'll about? just talk about pricing. I talk about a few. Okay, so it's you can see that region disparity effect, quantum effect. This is a function of a pricing now. Okay, so quantum is, what's the overall price quantum? We don't just look from a PSF angle. Region disparity is we want to see in a similar uh, district area, right? How does this fair up in terms of uh, the, the PSF difference. So let's go and check it out. Hey, sorry, uh, you all continue filming. You're going and to go, you go to the toilet. Okay, just continue, continue. Like continue then just yeah, yeah, continue. Wait, you will miss out what I say and then I you won't. cannot interact I, I really know what you want to say already. Acro. Continue. Usually when you niao ji, right, you will walk like that one. Like a duck. Because yeah, you cannot stand straight. Okay, niao niao man. Once you stand straight, then very painful one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, the region district di district <laughs> disparity. Okay, so generally wise, most of the time when I speak to retail investors, they always say like, okay, location, location is the most important. You go and mm. attend, uh, attend any like that property guru kind of classes. They also say, oh, location is the most important factor, right? Right. And we took like all these transactions first. Mm. CCR, triple nine years, this in Orchard area. Losses, sought by highest loss, $5 million. Millions of dollars, yeah. Okay. Next one, CBD, downtown MRT station, 1 million over to $2.3 million losses. And then people will, will ask me like, eh, these are areas that I won't buy one, like, don't worry. You know, like it only happens to like mm. where the foreigners are buying. And I'm going to start to show them things like this. Do we ever buy in Red Hill? Yes. Near MRT station, $1.4 million loss in Red Hill. Mm. Okay. Bishan, a lot of Singaporeans have to stay in Bishan, right? Mm. 200, 300 plus thousand losses. Highest was 617,000 loss. Mm. The reason why these losses happen is because people are always focused on good locations. I want prime district, I want good, near good school, near MRT. I prefer freehold triple nine years. Mm. But fundamentally, most importantly is to get entry price, right? So I give you another mm. extreme scenario. Mm. Like this, can a Ulu location be profitable? Look at this, no MRT station. Yep. 400 plus units. Mm. They can have up to 300 plus, 600, 300 plus to 400 plus thousand. Actually, against is quite crazy. 10% eh? yeah. analyzed beans. Yeah. yeah. So when the, 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 the key important thing here is this. I always believe that in Singapore, because the demand is so high, I can buy any house and be profitable. As long as I can buy at a specific price that I want. Mm. That discount whatever negative attributes. Price triumphs 
everything in the mall. Price is no. yes, yes to me yes. Price is not a function of cheap, ah. Yeah. Price is a function price of right. okay, yeah. Yeah, when you price yeah. correctly, it's not about cheap. Yeah, yeah. It's about you have the most intrinsic value cheap for the amount good. of yeah. money that you're going to invest in. And I always believe that out of selling all the houses, every house will have some form of cons. I always share jokingly to like, you know, like uh, buyers, right? Oh, you say the buyers will come and say, hey, this one got this thing. I say, if the house, uh, everything is perfect, right? Then you wouldn't like the price. Mm. 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 Yeah. So True. definitely every house will have some form of like their own cons, but sometimes the cons are not important to the buyers. Okay? So hence it offsets. So to me, you can ask me to buy like face rubbish shoot. Uh. I'm mm. okay to buy. I'm okay to buy expressway facing. I'm okay to buy any facing. As long as the price is correct. Because when the price function is correct, there will be a there will be a point that it is low enough for you to be able to exit to the next buyer. So I want to get a discount factor that's significant. So when you see more than the discount that I really need to need to pay for for like mm. getting on something of this negative trade. Right. So when you see price, that means uh it must make sense comparatively to let's say a quiet unblocked facing, yeah. very beautiful view. Yes to the expressway facing yes. there must be a significant price yes. discount yeah and then uh it will make sense fundamentally mm. however mm. however mm. of however. course in reality these yeah. things don't happen because number one the mm. sellers are not willing to pull yeah. the trigger the at this kind of pricing correct okay but if let's say there is hypothetically speaking there is this kind of scenario right it's a it's a, it's a sure profit so to me i don't care about okay in essence right to me pricing Mm. It's always been my one and only factor. I can accept all cons. However, in the reality of things, because pricing is not as elastic as I want it to be, mm. hence the mode analysis become mm, that go-to factor mm. to help us find that best sweet spot. So if I'm going to go ahead, yep. if I'm going to come up with X number of dollars, 1.5, 2, 2 and a half, 5, 10 million, I want to make sure that from an investment angle, I'm deploying in an area that has got potential for price improvement. Mm. Second thing, also that, you know, is there going to be more transformation? Is there going to be exit audience? Is there, in function, right? If one price to go up, it only boils down to one point. Is there going to be much more demand and supply? Mm. That's it. Uh, and, but interestingly, I think in 2024, it's a super interesting year. There will be gems and sweet spots that not your traditional attributes uh, that, will, that will perform in the last, you know, like two to three years. Example. This will be this will be the time to perform already. So certain selected right CBD projects, certain selected core central region projects, certain selected, you know, like something of a smaller size density mm -hmm. kind of project. These are, if to be the right one, it's going to be very interesting this year. They're going to see tremendous gains in the next mm -hmm. one to two years. Which brings us to our pairing strategy. Grace, talk about the pairing strategy. Explain what is it? Okay, so the pairing strategy <laughs> is... Uh, so what you just talked about is the pairing strategy, ma, right? Yes. So, okay, in terms of pairing strategy, uh, we look at the different types of uh, projects as well as... So, there's... um As well as the location. So, new launch, uh, resale, as well as... No, okay, new launch, TOP and resale, as well as OCR, CCR, and RCR. So, pairing strategy states that in every season, there is a correct pairing that makes sense. If we were to look at the slides... So, for example, pairing like RCR with new launch or CCR with TOP projects. Uh, and this is because of what we call the disparity effect, right? Because disparity in different, um, uh, when you compare certain pricing, uh, where the new launch pricing and the resale pricing gets too close, for example, then people will be looking at the new launches. But when the gap is too big, then they might go, go, uh, turn their attention back to the resale ones. Yeah. And then once we have determined the right pairing strategy, then mm. we zoom in to the more micro factors. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, you don't share uh, a very script. good point. You don't share a very good point um, mm. about... So he's, he's saying that to him, yeah. price triumphs all of these factors. Mm. So entering at the correct price, right, he can forsake any kind of factors here or even face the dustbin, face the um, expressway and all that. It's okay as long as I'm coming for investment yeah, because yeah, I'm going yeah. to rent it out. Yeah, as right, long so as the entry price is correct. Mm, yeah. but, but, but if I stay, but what if it's investment? But your buyer is for own stay then. If they're buying for own stay, then same thing. It's just you know everybody to a certain extent is a hybrid buyer. Mm. To a certain mm -hmm. extent, it's whether they are on a skill right. Are they are like zero percent investment mindset to hundred percent investment mindset. Yeah. So like it is always that kind of gradient. So depending on how investment savvy they are. 
then they, they will be able to accept. So sometimes, right, you can be buying this very good price, good value, but a lot of negative attributes and you don't want to stay there. Can you rent it out? Of course. And can you rent mm. somewhere that you absolutely love your gorgeous view? You can always do an arbitrage, right? So I think that is fine. But whether the, the buyer is in the correct stage of life that they are comfortable with doing arbitrage, mm. right? Then it's a different thing. Actually, for, for all properties, the final metrics is always a price. For example, even though how many uh, yeah. negative inherent factors that yeah. is, you, you just need to keep lowering the, the price to a certain price point, you will yeah. start to attract a new batch of buyers. Yeah. Mm. No, and that is why if there's somebody to sell, there's somebody to buy. Yeah. Like, I think that every property definitely you can sell. It's just whether you find that sweet spot between all your, okay, between the macro factors, the micro factors, as well as the price. Pricing acceptability. Yeah. yeah. We just went through that. <laughs> Um, that framework, right? The pricing of um, acceptability framework mm. that we talked about. We, we drew out that triangle and yeah. then we talk about the inherent factors and all that. Maybe let's share with our audience a little bit. Uh, meantime, George, you want to take on the next one? Or I try to find that slide. What um, would you like to talk about? I think the exit audience. Mm. I think this was often overlooked back then when a lot of investors they buy. So um, I think what Iron mentioned is very accurate. That means, uh, even though you know there's a discount factor in terms of the inherent issues that the particular property is facing, no mm. owners will want to sell very very low. Uh, sometimes they will just want to make sure that they can sell first before they move on. When we take a look at exit audiences, there are a few different categories. I think um, in the past, like one or two years, uh, at the OCR area, majority of um, the condo buyers come from the HDB upgraders. That accounts to about fifty plus to sixty percent. Why is that so? It's also because they have the cash proceeds and then they have the CPF that has been building up over the past eight to nine years from building until MOP. So that easily forms a down payment. Uh, HDB upgraders is just one of it. Uh, I think the other mm. uh, category is also the landed downgraders. Uh, more often than not, when they are reaching a certain age, kids have all been married and then they want to say they downsize. So I think having these few factors also kind of protect you in terms of the speed of exit at the kind of price that you want to exit and then you know it allows you to move on so yeah so there's the, the great minus. thanks but yeah. you know in terms of exit audience right you mentioned hdb upgraders landed downgraders <coughs> um it, it it still reflects the the idea that um most people want to stay where they are mm. yeah but i think that increasingly there is the trend of um, certain areas being more desirable such that it attracts people that are not traditionally they didn't grow up there to want to move there mm. right because the exit um, audience usually we look at whether it's in an area where it's surrounded by a lot of HDB clusters yep. a lot of landed clusters and your price right ma. Yep. your price right such that landed downgraders want to buy mm. HDB upgraders can afford yep. mm. right but um, now more and more I think that there are also people who are buying into certain areas mm. yeah so I mean I'm not sure whether that affects the exit audience maybe I just add on to what George was sharing about the exit audience is okay exit audience pre predominantly you have like two different things number one do you have a lot of new HDBs that were MOP mm -hmm. that's the important mm. thing because inherently of course there are people who want to move out of that location but a lot of times, let's say, for example, today you have family really, your support structure is that there is a high likelihood in terms of percentage that you want to stay in a similar location. Mm -hmm. So yep. hence, if you are owning a, a property that is desired by own stayers mm. and they are, and there is a lot of like BTOs that is going to MOP nearing your exit timeline, right? Why is this very important? It's because, right, these BTO people should make money. Second thing is they are very young. So they have the aspiration to want to switch to a Agreed, condo yep. versus a resale property I want to retire already. I want to, I want to right size. I'm not trying to switch up. So these two creates that upscale in terms of asset. The other thing will also be landed properties. Right? Landed properties, there are two categories for landed properties. Number one is what I call downstreamer. So like I have like landed owners that joke with me. Uh, I know, why do you know that they, I, I ask them, why do, why, how do you know that you want to move out of your lender? You see, Last time I stay on the third floor. Then my children move out. I move yeah. down to the second floor. And then now I climb to the second yeah. floor a bit tiring. I want to move down to the first floor already. Mm. And the house will never leave. So obviously you know that it's time to move out. La. Your body yeah. is telling you. Second thing is when you landed cluster, right? Just imagine, right? Nowadays we see more and more parents helping their children to kickstart their property journey because mm. they mm. are concerned that prices are going to escalate until an unaffordable area. Yeah. Price yeah. up. 
yeah. level, they want to help them kickstart and give them the advantage. Mm. And so if today you stay in a landed zone, mm. naturally people want to invest near where they are staying. And that's also the reason why a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. Right? They buy, they invest where they are staying and then Only it's not a profitable yeah. area. Correct. But the landed yeah. zone is very interesting. So now you support your trend, you will say, hey, why not? I got this condo that's around here. You just buy there. Yeah. I, I help you put the down payment. Mm. You can come back very quickly. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> so this is very important. So like, I, I, I love, let's say that's the reason why District 10, District 15. Okay, so maybe I use District 15, for example. They are in an RCR location, but the prices is almost like a core central kind of locale because it is one of the biggest district that houses the most amount of landed properties. Mm, private. Yes. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Also. So coming back to uh, Grace's point, right? Uh, just now she was talking about why is it that certain people will move towards a different estate. I think if you reference this uh, four main pointers, uh, of course, we, if we take price out of the picture, we just look at the fact that why is it that certain HDB upgraders they want to buy back into that same estate. For example, if somebody already own a HDB in Pongo, fulfill MOP, they buy back a condo, one of mm. the 13 condominiums within Pongo. Why do they want to do that? Most of the time is because their kids are already studying in the school there and they find it a hassle to move away. Yep. But sometimes people move out of that, maybe going into D10 because they want to get into ACS, right? Mm. Or they move into a place that is like uh, extremely popular. Uh, for example, like, uh, example, Grace, you don't live in D15 in the past, yeah. but you move there because of popularity. It's also a lifestyle, I believe. Mm. Like you like mm. to work out, you like go to the beach and stuff. You like to run. Exciting. I like to be near George. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, exciting you are must plan. <laughs> that one must cut off, yeah. <laughs> I mean like he moved from all the way from the north, extreme north, <laughs> all the way to D15, right? Because last time, <laughs> okay, because why he moved from the north is because last time there was a strategic move. It has to be in between two of no, their sorry, parents. Sorry. My, I like to be my, near Josh because I know he will buy in the area of high growth. That's what <laughs> I was No, but, but while he was staying in north, I think it was painful because his work in real estate, you realize he needs to be somewhere centralized. Mm. That's why it he- It's very painful eh. Yeah. You know, sometimes when I drive home, I really <laughs> want to drive until I want to fall asleep. Yeah, okay. But people who live in the, in the North, they have their rationale because maybe their workplace and stuff yeah. is all there. But yeah. I got nothing against the North lah. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, so, so I want to come back to this part, right? Merging with some of the points just now that uh, some of our presenters have talked about. Mm. This is the behind mindset of why certain buyers, uh, how a, a buyer perceives this thing, mm -hmm. what, what we call the price acceptability before they can make an offer. Yeah. It has also something to do with whether are we in a seller's market, which is a bull market, mm. or are we in a bear market, which is like a buyer's mm. market. So mm. a buyer's market, people make decisions slower, mm. usually in a in a period of higher interest rates. And us usually there's more negative news involved. Uh, seller's market is when it's a bit more bullish. People are like buying into into like new launches rapidly, 100% uh, like sell out event kind of stuff. So mm. uh, take note that when you select a property, if your property has great inherent factors, usually these kind of properties can exit in any market. And usually, usually these kind of properties, they call the shots. And mm. um, they are the ones that high floor, unblocked views, quiet facing, great layout. These are things that, um, you know, you cannot change in the sense that is is how your property overlooks certain things and and is a is a position of your property. Value add elements are things that you can change and upgrade within that property itself. So, when you look at these two factors, this affects the buyer's perception in terms of the price that they want to offer for your place. Yeah. So, when you have a lot of good inherent factors, the more willing are buyers willing to pay for that. When you value add more into your internal part of the home, mm. then even more so do they want to value add into that, which just now we were just looking at, at one of the property that uh, we have helped a client to exit. If you look at this this particular property at Dillida, we sold this super penthouse. That time it was uh, asking at 7.8 mil two years back. I think now it's even more. This property is one of the classic one with fantastic inherent uh, factors. It faces the GCB facing, choir facing part of Dillida. Mm -hmm. One of the best layouts that we have seen. Uh, and of course, the value adding element within it is like $500,000 of renovation. So it fulfills that portion about 0.1 and 2 and thus the price point of acceptability is higher. So um, end of the day, 
you need to balance these two things. If you cannot afford something with good inherent factors, uh, you can always value add. But when you have these two things, then you are technically owning one of the priced uh, properties within that development itself. So I think when you balance that out, when you're trying to sell a property as well, uh, these are the things that you can try to balance within your mind. Mm. Like, uh, for example, you will, you will tend to know whether your property is, is overpriced or underpriced because you have added value into the property mm. or you have previously selected a property with fantastic inherent factors. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think to add on basic inherent yeah. factors, right, uh, makes a certain property more rare. So of course, generally supply demand, if it's more rare, it's very hard to find a similar listing that is going to come up in the market. Then this unit is either going to go very fast or it's going to go in a very good price. But let's say if we happens to own a property where it's very homogeneous, there's a lot of selection that our potential buyers can also consider and so hence one of the one of the strategy will be of course we know that the pricing attribute will will not be able to you know like reach a certain point on target yeah right mm. so like for example let's say homogeneous products that usually happens okay not say really really homogeneous but usually in a TOP, very similar TOP like. property right yeah you have a swarm of listings coming out for yep. sale for example let's say mm. you have a one or two bidder then one of the way to stand out is really to value add mm. Mm. yeah whether mm. by way of renovation uh, I was just talking to one of our partners during the D&D last week, I was just asking like the current market of renovation, mm. what can 60,000 do? Yeah. The interior design boss was telling me that actually 60,000, you can do a lot to a newly TOP condo. It can become TOP, like a designer yes. renovation with 60,000 mm. because the core essential things are already done. Yeah. Flooring, kitchen, kitchen bathroom. bathroom, wardrobes. Mm. But 60,000 for HDB, you cannot do much. Nothing much, yeah. yeah. Bathroom, because because a, a lot of the money already went to the the internal stuff that people cannot see and better, like your yeah. rewiring, replumbing Piping. works, yeah. Yeah. you know, a plastering of yeah. walls, etc. Yeah. and all that stuff. Mm, yeah. uh, but something I think that's very interesting is I think like those that have like very homogeneous uh, are those that all, let's say a certain bedroom type, a certain project, they are all the same facing one. There is no differentiation. Yeah. Mm. And then whether high floor, low floor, you are still saying the same facing. So it all comes down to like what yeah. I mean, so internally, is it better renovated? Is it better mm. maintained? Mm. And the price. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's something that we see day to day actually. Like every property that we sell, also we are like trying to balance between the inherent factors as well as the value added elements. Like, you know, that's it's like some like two bidders that we have sold before, like previously at Interlace. Uh, the value added element is very high because a lot of the, the products are, are generally the same. Of course, there are different facings, but layout wise, bay window wise, it's all pretty much the same. So, um, the unit that we saw is, is, is beautiful, you know, so that was a high value add element. Then, for example, this week, uh, Zoe and I, we are, we are selling, um, one of the units um, uh, at Bradle View. So Bradle View is an XHUDC. Mm. So size is fantastic. 1,560 square feet compared to a lot of the three bedders in the Topayo Bradle area. Now it's like 700, 800 square feet. So the inherent factor is very strong. But the unit that we're selling is very, very, very original condition. But still, there are so many inquiries because it's priced right. Yeah. Mm. And, and the inherent factors. Lah. Right. Inherent factors cannot be changed. Mm. Value add elements can be changed. Actually, in a house, the only thing you can change is the renovation. Yeah. Mm. And the uh, people staying there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can change the human being. <laughs> change the human if they don't add value. <laughs> <laughs> You're up like myself. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, actually, this is a very good point. So, for example, true. sometimes, you know, like uh, tenanted units. Or your pets is affecting the tenant. Experience. Yeah, tenanted oh. units <laughs> sometimes take two to three times longer to sell because the tenants just do not yeah. open the door for being Seriously. available. Yeah. Yeah. Or once they go in, right, the buyer just walk Actually, out. Actually, rather they don't open the door sometimes. <laughs> because it's very messy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Then, then, you how, then, then how you sell? Just through the PLB video. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we, we ever did a case where we shifted all the tenants out. Which is why yesterday my friends came over to my home. Then she was asking me like this can, listing can you ship out? On, on property <laughs> guru. No, she was asking, hey, why this house all showed rendering photos only? Why you know, they were showing the original? I said, oh, the original photo, I think it's too too. That's why nobody will call <laughs> with the original yeah. photo. No, but if it's priced right at a point where I add in the, the renovation that I want to put in, I'm still buying at a price that is very comparable to all the other units that are asking, then it makes sense because I can customize it how I want. Uh it I'm when after I add in the rental cost, it's still my laugh. 
Oh, hi. Hello. Hey, why you laugh? Hey, don't disturb the trail of thoughts. Yeah, please be serious and pay attention. Why you laugh? Okay. As I was saying, so it's like- it's Why like, you must like twitch a little bit? Reset ah? Reset. Okay, okay so okay. so let's say if you're buying at, for example, 1.5, then you pump in about 100k of renovation, but you look at all the other more renovated units, they are asking maybe 165. Then it then it does make sense because you get to customize it to how you like, you know. Yeah. In fact, it yeah. is better because yeah. you're already getting something brand new. Okay, unless time is a concern for you. <laughs> Actually, I think for serious. TOP projects, or huh? time, is, time serious. is serious. Time is serious. <laughs> Actually, for TOP projects, I think if you really need to exit, you should spend a bit of money to spruce up the place. Do some renovation. To command a no, higher. No, let's, say, let's say example, uh, it's you finally right? waited for it to mm, hit true, TOP true, true. and that's the time you hit SSD or so. Mm. And you're at a season that you're ready to go to a lender example. Mm. You cannot just possibly leave it there and just hope that compared with all the rest of the stack or the same facing on the stacks bes beside my left and right hand yeah. side. Then because the buyer's mindset is that everything being constant, similarly, I will just price compare price only. Yeah. Yeah. One, right, yeah. one, one of the, uh, okay, two things that are very easy, right? To make your house look much more atas. Okay, tell the audience. Number one, motorized zip blinds. <laughs> motorized zip blinds. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because motorized zip blinds are not that cheap to do. And second thing, it really immediately makes a balcony very functional true, for the true, next buyer. True. Motorized are not like the, you need to pull yourself <laughs> kind of, motorized. <laughs> Next thing is actually uh, <laughs> your lightings. So sometimes I right, to make mm. a property suddenly increase right in terms of like your the the luxury feel right. It's to just <laughs> switch out all the lightings to nice pendant yeah, lights. Do not buy the hum bao bao. No hum bao bao. No hamburger bao bao light. Light. So like one the, round one light. Just let it pop on Cove lighting is best. Cove lighting is best. Spotlight also. Change the modern LED strip lights or whatever. So so recently I have like a like a TOP project right and the client wants to rent out and then like. Uh, he was very open to take suggestion. I say like, don't buy hamburger light. Choose a decent pendant light. And then he said, hey, if I install zip blinds, will it increase my price? And I say, yes, lah, it will help it. You know, for the, when you're going to sell one year later. And he really installed. Hey, and then I, uh, I walked in, one viewing, close. Wow. Offer on the spot. Hey, I want to show everybody. And there were a lot yeah. of listings in the project. This is the latest technology. Uh. The latest Can I go for a toilet break now? Yeah, I also want yeah, to go to the toilet break. Hey, watch this first. <laughs> uh. hey. You play this, you go to the toilet break and you okay, come go, back. Go, 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 B, go, B. This is an extended episode. I want to share with everybody our latest technology. So look at this. Oh my goodness. Have a look at it. Focus on the patio. Boom. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have not catched this video at one ember, this is a ground floor two bidder that is just recently listed. We have a lot of new visualization uh, technology that really helps to showcase the potential of a home mm. in terms of what we can do internally. So um, there's a lot of renovation uh, tech here. So I just want to share a little bit about this part as well. Okay, just have a look on this patio renovation idea. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think our team, our, our architectural tech team, yeah, is really getting more and more advanced. Amazing. Yeah, in, in the things. And of course, like uh yeah, you see this part. The dining area is pretty unique as well. Let me just share with everybody on the dining. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is the part dining area renovation. No small talk. <laughs> yeah, look at that. More I more think right, what, so this is what they say. In terms of inherent factors, you cannot leave it, you don't leave much to imagination. But for renovation, you can, you know, if, if the buyer's imagination is strong enough and if you have the technology to help them dream, yeah. you, can, you can do a lot of great things. Yeah. So the key thing about like selling is I always, I always share that the people who can visualize when you step into a house, that doesn't look ready to move in, that's where you get the best deal. Mm. Those that cannot visualize and we stage all the house nicely for you is so that you know like, <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> then you will, you will pay a premium. Like. Well, what, what you are trying to say is that if you are somebody that knows to hunt for property from an investment mindset, mm. you want to hunt for like, um, properties that you know after you purchase, you can actually value at yourself you don't have to depend on the value adding element by the current seller. Yeah. You can hunt for those properties with poor internal renovation condition because you know that with a certain 
budget. Maybe with just a limited budget, you can spruce up the entire place to look good. And you good can already. control that budget. Yeah. yeah. So you can actually hunt for like properties that are more like undervalued or is like fair market value and you don't have to pay a premium for properties that has been renovated because sometimes the renovation could already been there for 10 to 12 years. Mm. So, um, and of course, you, you must have the eyes to know that actually uh, a lot of things can be tweaked and improved with fantastic furniture choices mm. Yeah, as well. I remember uh, this buying experience. I was like <coughs> helping one of these clients to invest. We walk into this house. I say, this is a very good, you don't miss it. Mm. And she walked away and say, ah, the condition very bad. I say like the, what you're seeing in terms of condition, right? It's not even bad. It's just that the house was super dusty. Yeah. And I say like a cleanup is done. But the price and inherent factors are good, right? And she didn't pull the trigger. She missed it. <laughs> and when I showed the caravan and say like, wow, this one is a very good price. And the next unit we are finding same development, lower floor. Oh. We had to go higher in pricing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, just remember that sometimes a simple cleanup to a house. New paintwork a new paintwork, some lighting, you already give a dramatic shift uh, to... So so that's the reason why when you sell every house, you try yeah. to remove like all the visual negatives first. Right. Mm. And we remove the owners during the viewing. <laughs> remove the pets. Remove <laughs> the kids. Yeah. By the way, for this uh, video, I introduced a new framework. It's called the Pacer Framework. So if you want to know what is the Pacer Framework, do head on to this particular episode on our main uh, PLB channel. I share with you how to pace by hunting for certain properties that are, is not the top PSF benchmark of the market. So uh, this particular home tour explain the Pacer Framework as well. We can elaborate that on our future webinars. All right, so we're coming to the end of today's uh, NOTG episode. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you on the next few banters with uh, our home team. And of course, uh, we are going to have a host of exciting guests that will be with us yeah. in 2024. And uh, thank you for supporting us. We want to wish you a wonderful 2024. In time, take care. Bye. Hola. Bye.